Okay, uh, welcome back everyone to the Voxball Guest Lecture Series. And uh, my, our guest today is Jonathan Collins, who's a PhD candidate at the Department of International Relations at Charles University, uh, concentrating on the rise of the far right as both a social movement and threat for violent mobilization. But today he's here to talk to us about uh, a really useful uh, methodology, which is an ethnography. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand off to Jonathan. All right, uh, thank you very much. So. Yeah, uh, I'll be giving an introduction to netnography as well as providing my my step by step guide. Uh, I, I might ramble on for something like forty five minutes, and 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 now it it may be a bit difficult for me to cover a full methodology within uh, the parameters of that. But I I'm going to do my best. Um, and really, why the hell should you care about netnography? Um, and this is stemming from my own PhD research, uh, looking at the the, the missing pieces when looking at online extremist communities. And, and really there's a hyper fixation, I would call it, on extremist outputs, on the toxic communications, the hate filled communications that we all know and, and study when we're talking about these extremist communities. Uh, but what we really forget about is the users and we forget about the user experiences and the cultural experiences. And now I'm gonna talk a lot uh, about the cultural experiences in, in this presentation. So it's super important to, to remember. Uh, that that we need to start thinking about recentering our our approach to uh, researching online extremist communities, focusing on immersion, focusing on cultural experience, focusing on uh, developing nuances to to the communications that are happening on these on these social media sites, on these communication sites. Um, and this is really all about broadening our, our set of methodological tools, uh, how important it is as our uh, field develops to also have uh, more encompassing tools to, to cover a, a wide range of, of different subjects, disciplines, uh, and, and subject matters. Uh, so in terms of the presentation, uh, I'll be going over first, what is netnography? I think that's pretty important to, to, to cover. Uh, then I'll be talking about its benefits, why the hell you should really care uh, about conducting an ethnography. Uh, the, the bulk of my presentation is going to be this step-by-step this -step guide as well. I, I hope that uh, you, you learn a lot when I go through the steps. Uh, there's six steps in total. I don't expect you to remember them, but, but it, it'll provide you a, a great starting point in, in conducting your first ethnography. Uh, I, I have a slide about researcher well-being as well. I think that's really important when we're talking about these kind of ethnographic or anthropological studies, whether that's online or offline. Uh, and then a couple of practice examples from, from my own research that, that we can talk about, we can go through. Um, and hopefully you, you, you get a little uh, sample of, of, of how to conduct an ethnography. Uh, so starting us off, what, what the hell even is netnography? And it's it's this really important dualism between cultural experience, there that word is again, uh, and qualitative understandings. And when we're talking about understandings, we're talking about understanding social media um, and, and different communication sites. And, and well, research does a really great job at, at, at this investigation part uh, of understanding social media. Uh, it doesn't do such a great job at, at looking at interaction, at, at, at looking at immersion and actually putting ourselves uh, not in the shoes of extremists, but putting ourselves in their place, uh, in participation, in interaction in, in these communication sites. Um, at its core, it's very much a pragmatic approach with a, a set of, of guided actions, which will help direct the researcher throughout the process, not only in the research process, but also in the writing process, um, which is very much grounded in qualitative anthropological approaches, but also sociological approaches, uh, very much a reconstituted ethnography for studying the online domain, for, un for studying the, the online interactions in, the, in, the, in, in the, these virtual spaces. Um, so when we think about ethnography, we think about the flip side of ethnography, and there's a lot of different tenets uh, of ethnography that find their way uh, into ethnography, uh, talking about human experience and the everyday lives that, that are happening in the interactions, the, the, the cultural productions that are occurring uh, in the liking, in the replying, in the commenting, in the, in the, in the posting of content, in the memes, in the videos, uh, the music, whatever it may be, it's all about the, the, the human experience, um, producing the, the, the kind of findings that, that replicate what these users are going through, what these participants are going through. 
Um, and when we're talking about social media, we're talking about these communication sites. It's very much a, so, uh, a social system of, of shared meaning, right? Uh, we're not just interested in what one user is doing on the platform. We're interested in how these users interact uh, with one another, how they produce these cultural elements. Um, and my favorite part about netnography, which, which should really be stressed, is the reflexivity and, and the self-awareness that comes from the research that we as researchers uh, and I'll and I'll talk about this you know, when I go over the the six steps uh, that we as researchers are an important part and an important piece in in develop, developing our findings that that our understanding our experiences our emotions while conducting uh, our studies uh, very much fit within the data itself. Um, so I'll I'll show you how how that will all connect with with one another. Um, and the the common thing I get when people ask me what the hell an ethnography is, it's really uh, closely related, but it's not just another fancy term for online ethnography or digital ethnography or, or digital anthropology. It's very much uh, its own beast uh, uh, that was developed by uh, Robert Cotonets, um, looking at media studies, looking at cultural studies. Um, and it's re really centered around the investigation of, of digital traces. And, and those digital traces, when we're talking about online platforms, we're talking about different texts, we're talking about graphics, music, audio visual, audio visual and, and, and much more. more. Um, and this is an expansive set of practices. When we're talking about ethnography, uh, we most often were talking about these offline studies of, of, of ethnography and understanding the cultural elements. But when we mix into the social world, the, the constantly adapting uh, new kind of social spheres, web 1.0, web 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, whatever the hell uh, people are, are calling it nowadays, uh, there's many different disciplines that we need to integrate into our studies, uh, that being computer science, communication studies, media studies, cultural studies. Uh, which really flows well into the constant updates that that the methodology is getting. Uh, and, and this is interesting because from the 2015 to 2019 textbooks, uh, there's a completely new set of practices, a completely new set of techniques for understanding uh, the, 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 the different uh, needs of, of the disciplines. And now IR and security studies and online extremism hasn't really featured in, in any of Kozinets' work as of yet. Uh, I hope that in this presentation and uh, while more scholars, hopefully after this presentation, uh, start ad uh, adopting netnography, they begin to become integrated and part of this netnography scene. Um, and it's very pragmatic. And, and like I'll show you in, in the step-by-step -step guide, netnography has a base of, of principles, a base of guidelines that, that one should follow, which will help you produce these, these cultural elements uh, and make it easier for, for, for researchers to produce uh, these nuanced understandings, these immersive understandings. Uh, so talking about netnography's benefits, and especially netnography's benefits for uh, research into online extremist communities, like I said, methodological guidelines, that's first and foremost principle core value, uh, which I'll be going over uh, very uh, soon. Um, there's a real novelty in findings, and that comes from this kind of deep immersion or, or nuance that, that, that happens when we integrate into these, into these communities. Uh, the months of integration, the months of understanding the different cultural nuances, the different layers of communication, the replies, the commenting, uh, the, the likes, uh, whatever that may be. Uh, which really sets it apart from, from other uh, big data studies that, that just pull and, and rack and scrape uh, hundreds of thousands of, of content, but do doesn't really get into the community, doesn't really understand the, the community uh, as such. Um, and this really flows into the different types of content that, that can be studied. It doesn't just have to be text uh, when we're talking about anthropology, when we're talking about cultural experience. We're also talking about videos, about music, about memes. There's a whole um, new set of, 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 of data that, that we can unpack with ethnography. Um, but netnography doesn't need to exist on its own. 
Um, and while I don't want to poo-poo uh, quantitative uh, studies in, in the slightest, there, there are some great pairing techniques. I personally use uh, qualitative content analysis. I use sentimental analysis. I use discourse analysis, pairing with ethnography uh, to, to provide this kind of complementary or supplementary data uh, to, to uh, the, the, the far right communities that I, that I analyze. Um, so it, it, it provides this really great bridge, this mixed method between qualitative and quantitative. Um, and then finally, just really briefly, I'm, I'm going to have a, a full slide talking about researcher safety and the importance of researcher safety. Uh, and Closetets also talks about uh, the ethical guidelines. And there's a great chapter on, on ethical guidelines and staying ethical within this research. Um, Although I don't exactly agree with everything that Kozinets says in his in his ethics, uh, we don't need to get too deep into it, but he talks about getting permission from the community in order to conduct an ethnography. I don't know how exactly that would turn out when, uh, when looking at some online extremist uh, communities, but this is where our field can bring something new uh, to, to ethnographic research and can help change it or help transform it uh, to something that is, that is even more applicable uh, for, for for our discipline, for, for who we are studying. Okay, now moving to the, the bread and butter, the, the most important, and I'm guessing what everyone is interested in, the, the, the six eyes, as Cosinets likes to call it. And you again, you don't need to remember the, the six eyes, but uh, the, the beauty of netnography is, is really this how-to guide, the easy to follow steps. Uh, that that will guide you, will will help you conduct your your first ethnography. Uh, the first step being initiation, and and this isn't going to differ that much from how anyone else would would conduct a, a study. Uh, you you want to provide your study with some overall direction, all the different topics and 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 approaches that comes with researching online extremism and the vast unfortunately vast expanse of, of online extremist uh, communities that are that are out there. Uh, Cosinus really focuses on the research question uh, and what the research question can actually help to answer. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of questions that 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 kind of come from that. What exactly is the concepts that you're looking at? What really do you want to find out? How do you want to find that out? Uh, you need to situate yourself in the field. Again, this isn't anything new, uh, but how would your work actually contribute to the field? What is the research gap? Um, talking about my own research, I noticed when 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 looking at fringe platforms, and now there's not a lot of uh, research onto fringe social media platforms, uh, but what research there is out there is really focused on the the millions of posts, the scraping of posts, but not actually the nuances or, or the cultural experiences of the users, why users actually want to be a part of these communities and the identity and the collective identity and sense of community that's being formed. Um, so that's how I found ethnography to be this kind of provisionary. It, it would help answer these questions that that other uh, that other research hasn't, that other studies hasn't. Uh, so situating is super important. Um, and then when we talk about formulating the research question, uh, it, it should very much be free flowing. Uh, when you're conducting an ethnography over two months, three months, four months, five months, however many months you you decide. Um, it's important to understand that research questions are just a guide and that or or a vehicle as i put it here that that your research question can change and as you immerse yourself and as you get interested in certain topics or certain conversations that are happening uh your interest in the specific community the cultural elements of of the specific community um are very much bound to change so don't don't let uh your one research question be an inhibitor rather let it be this this preliminary guide and and as your study evolves, uh, allow your research question to change. And even in the writing process, if, if what you're writing about doesn't really match the research question, feel free to change the research question. Uh, I don't know if, if, if that's a bit radical uh, for, for some people in, in something like quantitative studies, uh, but that is very much the approach you should take when you're, when you're conducting ethnography, anthropology. It, it, it needs to be quite loose. It needs to be reflexive. Uh, understanding that your own emotions and your own interpretations very much guide uh, the study throughout the process. 
Uh, finally, it's really important to stay within the bounds of, of netnography. Uh, and there are two very simple bounds that the first is, is online cultural phenomena, right? We want to uh, stick to the interactions of, of, of users on these online platforms. We need to situate ourselves into the social media or communication sites, um, which, is, which is the second uh, realm of things. So it's this balance between the cultural elements, the, the anthropo anthropological or ethnographic elements that are that are transpiring uh, in these virtual spaces and that these virtual spaces are meant for communication they're meant for interaction whether that be a microblog where one user posts uh, their main ideas and then people are commenting or reacting or replying afterwards or if it's a, on a huge social media platform like Twitter or Facebook or reddit that interaction is is key uh, okay moving on to uh, I, uh, investigation. Uh, and again, a lot of these principles uh, stay very similar to, to other research in the field. You want to turn your, your research question into some sort of simplified form that you can actually then search using search en engines to find keywords, to find what other research has been done, but also to find the platforms that you're interested in. Um, and, and once you have this kind of preliminary set of platforms or communication sites, whatever you want to call it, uh, you're going to start conducting a preliminary investigation into the community. Uh, and this is really just a simple browsing of the site. Uh, you're going to want to view the con content, view the interaction, see what's being posted, uh, look at the different subgroups, the different subcommunities uh, on, on the, the respective site that, that, that you're looking at. Uh, because when it comes down to the study, you have to be selective. Um, and I would, uh, I would love to be able to give you a full cultural breakdown of, of Gab Social, uh, but with something like 200,000, 300,000 users, it's impossible to cover everything. You'll never be able, you'll be driving yourself insane trying to cover the different cultural uh, elements. So it's important, uh, very important to be selective. Choose one site, then choose a subgroup of the site or, or uh, some part of the community that you're interested in. Obviously, if some sites aren't posting a, a large amount of content and there's only uh, a couple of posts a day uh, with replies and interactions, that's completely fine too. But you don't want to uh, really uh, set yourself up for failure with, with, a, with a crazy large task that, that would be impossible for, for an individual. Um, in terms of saving, this, this is also an important part. There's three different types of, of saving the specific data uh, that, that you're looking at or, or want to capture. Uh, I use two separate me methods. The one is, is through screen capturing um, or through screenshots. Uh, so you can actually record the videos or record the images, the music, whatever it may be, uh, and then post it into a, a separate uh, file, and then you can use that for your for your um, for your coding uh, later. Uh, there's also the cut and paste option, which I also use, especially when it comes to far right memes. Uh, now, their memes are usually quite text heavy. Uh, so I, I found a program called Capture to Text, and there's and there's quite a, a few of these uh, different programs where you can actually uh, capture the words uh, that that are that are part of the images or part of the pictures, part of the memes, uh, and then you can just transfer those words into a different doc, and that saved me a lot of time from from actually typing out all of the words um, that I was looking at the memes. But you can also do that for for the text, the content of of posts as well. Uh, and then there's scraping, uh, which which I used for my most recent study, doing a, conducting a, a sentiment analysis where I wanted to capture uh, two sets of data. Uh, where um, I did a, a closer read of the study using cut, cut, uh, cut and paste, and then I scraped uh, a couple of thousand posts uh, to, to kind of give it a, a more generalized uh, flair. Next slide. There we go. Uh, interaction. Now, interaction is, is, is a super interesting uh, kind of topic, uh, especially when we're talking about extremist uh, environments. Uh, so when you think about ethnography, you think about these cultural anthropologies, you, you probably think about people going into the field and talking and interacting with, with, with these uh, extremist figures or whoever it is they're studying. Uh, and uh, that doesn't have to be the case, uh, especially when conducting a ethnography. And now 
the idea of participation, uh, as Kozinets, uh talks about, is, is to take part and to share in. Uh, but the online context differs, right? If you are on social media, you are on Twitter, you are on Facebook, whatever it is, on your, on your daily social media grind, um, and you are just swiping through, uh, the content that that is being uh, given to you, you as as I do for too many hours uh, in the day, that is a form of participation. That is a form of uh, interaction. Without liking, without replying, without commenting, you engrossing yourself uh, into this content, as many of the of these others use other other users are doing uh, is it's, it's its own form of, of interaction of being immersed uh, into this community. Uh, so there are different uh, layers of engagement, different levels of engagement that don't have to involve this, this, uh, this kind of duty or sense that, that you have to go out and, and, and interview or comment or reply or DM or, or do uh, any of this kind of social interaction as, as point five states. Uh, there's intellectual engagement, uh, and this is really trying to get the deeper conceptual understanding of, of the interests and the information that are coming out of these communities. Uh, there's a, a explicit cultural uh, layer of engagement, which is examining the specific practices of the community, looking at their symbols, looking at their rituals, looking at the patterns uh, of their interaction. Uh, there's historical. Uh, now, I did my in undergrad in history, so I, I have uh, quite a soft spot for this. Uh, and there's some great research on on uh, the far right and, and this kind of uh, nostalgic past that they have. So this is considering the past trajectories, the customs, the traditions, the myths. Uh, and narratives and, and how these past constructions of, of life, of, of worldview, then kind of mend into current topics, their, their current understandings of the world. Uh, there's emotional, uh, and this is really attending to, to the, the feelings of those whose worlds you're studying and, and the words and the meaning behind these words. And I'm, and I'm doing this for uh, my study on Gab Social, conducting a sentiment analysis. Um, and this really involves this sort of normative shift into the value system, into the ideas, into the way that they think and, and really put yourself not to sympathize or to empathize with why they are posting uh, the extreme things that they are posting Thing, but to really get a better idea and a, an emotional idea behind the content, the interactions that they are. And then finally, the, there is the, the, the point of, of the social realm and the social interacting. And there's some great research as well on going into these communities and actually interviewing, on commenting, on replying and, and, and direct uh, messaging. But like I said, this is only part and parcel of netnography. Your your participation does not have to uh, bend to to this interaction, especially when we're talking about these very violent uh, online extremist communities. All right, and there's there's the second part of it. So there's the data part uh, of of interaction and collection, and, and then there's us, the, us as researchers, our own reflections, our own immersion into these communities as we spend months at a time. Um, engaging in, in the content. Uh, so what Cosinets calls a immersion journal uh, is, is, is a really great kind of tool for us. Uh, and this may take many different forms. I, I guess I, I should have had it as, as a kind of uh, show and tell. I have my own physical um, journal in which I like to write in every day, my everyday experiences of, of what I'm, what I'm documenting, uh, on, on the, on the websites that I'm looking at. Uh, but this can take many different for forms. You can write a, a blog about it. You can create a whole website about it. Uh, you can have just a word doc. You can have a diary, a journal, whatever it may be, but it's important that as you're conducting the field notes, uh, as you're conducting the research, that you write your, your, your feelings. Like what, what are these field notes that, that you're supposed to write about, right? Uh, and you wanna document what is happening, obviously the kind of basic interactions, cultural elements, but, but also how it feels uh, and, and what it really means, why the, the users are talking about uh, what, 
what they are uh, and why does it matter? <laughs> I think it's important to to not just document when you're when you're writing in these uh, immersion journals, not just document what the hell is is going on, although that is interesting. I think the data itself uh, kind of encapsulates that. You want the, the 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 deeper meaning. Your field notes are supposed to reflect your own thoughts, your own immersion. What what is actually happening? Why does it matter? Uh, what kind of concerns that you have throughout the research? How how are your ideas changing throughout the research? What are the main themes that, that you're picking up? Um, and really, it's this idea to be critical and to unpack further and further and further the different ideas that you're constantly having uh, as, as you conduct this study. Um, but it's important as well to not get lost in the sauce uh, and to re remember your conceptual or, or theoretical basis. Um, or as, as I'm doing for, for quite a lot of my studies, create your own models, create your own uh, theories, use, use the grounded theory approach and this really reflexive uh, epistemology that, that, that you're uh, working through to create your own ideas on, on what the hell is happening uh, in these communities. Um, so remember, when we're talking about reflection, we're, we're talking about... Uh, your own thoughts, your own feelings, your own ideas, and they very much are, are part of the analysis. Do not uh, undersell the importance of your own immersion, uh, your, your, your own uh, data that, that you are creating, because uh, if you forego this part, if you forego, forego the immersion journal, if you forego the, the, the field work that you're conducting, then it's not a netnography anymore, right? Then it's just a, a data collection technique with, with extra steps. So rem remember, your ideas, your uh, thoughts, your feelings very much matter uh, in, 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 this, uh, in this data collection as well as writing research process. All right. Uh, you might you might also ask how to then integrate uh, everything together. How do we take these two sets of data that that might not seem uh, so well connected um, and put them into one consolidated piece? Uh, and this is this idea between contrasting interpretation with analysis. Um, and what we, what I would call it is a, is a type of data triangulation, and you can use your mixed methods to help uh, better triangulate this, as I do with qualitative content analysis, um, as I do with sentiment analysis and discourse uh, analysis, but I wouldn't be afraid to kind of mix and match and bring in your own themes uh, to the other uh, methodologies. So, for example, qualitative content analysis, I'm bringing the themes that I found during my immersive experience, during my unpacking, into the, the, the inductive findings of the qualitative analysis, and then breaking it down uh, ev even further. And now this, this kind of contrast or this bringing together the, the data kind of depends on, on how we're actually approaching it, uh, approaching the study, I mean, between deductive versus inductive versus abductive. Now deductive is having this kind of theoretical and conceptual framework and pinning it up against our own data uh, in which you're intermixing, again, uh, the research data along with your own data um, and 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 presenting if that theory is true or building on that theory. The inductive is really you have a, a broader question that you want to answer uh, and you have this data that you're unpacking uh, and then you take this kind of grounded theory approach and, and create your own conceptualization, your own models, your own theories on, on how uh, or why the phenomena is happening. And then we have abductive um, which, which is really taking an anomaly from the data and, and, and pairing it again with some sort of theory or creating your own uh, and then unpacking it uh, and, and presenting uh, this, this new, uh, new invention that, that, that you have. Um, and so it's important to unpack the data and this is unpacking both sets of data, right? And that coding is key in both sets of data. You're unpacking not only the, the stuff that you collected but also your own field notes. Um, and now some people, uh, Cosinets talks about uh, self-coding or manually coding like 100,000 different content in his physical journal. Don't do that. Uh, that, that sounds um, 
just uh, a bit insane. Uh, what I would recommend is to use a qualitative data analysis software or QDAS. Uh, I use Max QDA, but uh, NVivo, Atlas TI, whatever uh, your university may have uh, will, will, will do the trick. Um, and there's also language software to, to help unpack it as well. I haven't gone too deeply uh, into that, but there is machine learning techniques that you can use to, to help speed up the process. Uh, but but no, this is very open coding uh, process, right? You want to be reflexive. You want to produce uh, the most important themes um, and, and, and use your field notes to then build uh, on the other data uh, that you have, on the collected data uh, that, that, that you have. Uh, and then finally, uh, Kozinets kind of cheats. Uh, with his six eyes and talks about incarnation, which is just a terrible, awful word. Uh, so really he means communication, um, but I'll, I'll let that one slide um, as he's trying to be clever. Uh, and it's really important to tell your reader what the hell nanography even is uh, and, and the steps you took to conduct one. Now, nanography isn't uh, so much a, a, a mainstream methodological practice, especially when it comes to online extremism. So the more explicit that you can be in how you conducted the, uh, the, the study, um, as well as as well as what nanography is uh, to begin with, would, is, is, is really uh, important to showcase. Um, you need to tell your reader about the data that you collected, for how long you collected it for, um, how you collected it, and, and what final form it, it took for your uh, analysis. Uh, something that I didn't, I, I didn't really cover is how long you should spend in conducting an ethnography. Um, and there is no specific answer. Uh, really, what, what the research suggests is that you should spend as much time until you exhaust uh, the findings that you go into these communities and okay, you start seeing the same thing over and over and over again and nothing has really developed. Uh, so make sure you're explicit as well on, on how long you collected, how long you uh, unfortunately stayed in some of these online extremist communities. Uh, and then RV is all about storytelling. It's all about the art of storytelling. How did you unpack these complex findings? How did you take your collected data and your immersive journal, your immersed data, and bring it into one consolidated piece? How did you connect the, the, the online traces together? Uh, and that's uh, super important. And that should be really the main frame of, of your analysis, of your uh, discussion, is, is to tell a really encapsulating story, an exciting story. It is you, as the researcher, that has this kind of power to, to, to tell something of interest, the cultural experiences that, that, you, um, that you experienced. Um, uh, I think it's really important as well to reproduce the the, the textual and, and non-textual data in the study, whatever you collected. Uh, and I know that new and journals are starting to incorporate videos uh, in, in, into their, their online versions, but include images, include the, the, the audio, include the different memes and content, whatever you can do to sure up that message, to help tell your story better, to, pry to, to provide an interesting angle to your story. Um, you, you should definitely do that. Um, and, and just really quickly, uh, talking about uh, data and, and the rep reproducing of the data, um, I oftentimes undergo this, this practice of cloaking the data, uh, especially when I'm, I'm researching Gab Social, you may not feel the need to do it on other, um, on other uh, fringe platforms or extremist platforms, whatever you're looking at, uh, is to uh, change up the, the, the wording or, or change up the content uh, so that if someone was to go back and try and reverse search for that specific content, uh, they wouldn't be able to find it. And that's just one way uh, of, of protecting uh, the, the, the users or the participants that, that, that we're looking to study. Uh, really importantly, uh, and, and this is, if you're not gonna take home anything else, uh, from my from my speech, the most important thing to know is that there's no nanography that is the same, um, and and this method very much is going to take time. It's going to take patience. It's going to take practice. Um, 
but what's beautiful about it is it's it's your own experience it's it's something that you can explore uh on 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 your own kind of will on on your own cultural or user uh experience will something that you're interested in uh and 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 just go out and and explore it and i say that there's no nanography that is the same because uh if you go and look for for other uh, examples and you try and replicate uh, exactly what someone else did, it's impossible because it's your own immersion. It's your own thoughts. It's your own feeling. It's it's really the, your own takeaways uh, from these communities. So uh, my best advice is just to go out and, and, and start uh, ethnography. If you're interested, just do it. Just practice. Uh, Conduct just a small little netnography if you want, a week's time on, on one certain extremist community or even on, um, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Reddit, and see what kind of things that you find out, what kind of things you find out about yourself and, and the research process. Uh, so I have some practical examples. How am I, how am I doing on, uh, on time as I'm blabbering away? Um, I'm, I'm doing all right. Uh, so I have some practice, practical examples from some of the research that I uh, conducted. Uh, this is one, uh, one way of, of capturing the data uh, where I uh, screen captured uh, uh, the uh, some far right uh, influencers. All right, so, so what you wanna do uh, when you're conducting an ethnography is while you're watching these videos, while you're looking at the interactions, I want you to have your immersion journal, whether it's a physical or uh, uh, an online journal. And I want you to write about what's happening, not just about the content itself, which, which is very interesting when we're talking about Mark Collette and his connections with, uh, or his connections as a far right influencer uh, in the UK, but why is he posting the content that he's doing and what kind of reactions is, is this content uh, producing. Um, And, and the UK far right influencers love to go on about the, the collapse of UK society and, and how cultural enrichment or the diversification of the UK population is is leading to uh, the, the the collapse, uh, the, the the white genocide of the population or the British genocide of, of, of culture. Um, and, and that's quite face value, as you can see, but there are other emotions and it's up to you as the researcher to unpack uh, these these other thoughts and feelings and to go into to the comments and see how other individuals um, are, are are reacting to it and 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 talking about it amongst uh, one another um, uh, and the, the the other study that I'm doing is more so about community building um, and and the sentiment attachment on gab uh, so this is another form of collection that you can do uh, is is the kind of copy and paste. And I'm just I'm just showcasing you how you can how you can do this copying and pasting uh, while keeping the content. So the original post was a lefty on Gab looking to meet interesting people, uh, and then I'm not going to read out uh, all of the replies, but. It is it is up to us as researchers not to only unpack the the content itself, but also again these cultural elements, uh, the the interactions and and oftentimes the ugly, uh, grotesque, hate filled interactions that are happening um, uh, on these communities, as these are uh, very important elements to to the construction of identity, the construction of collectives, uh, as I as I showcase this in this uh, far right space. Uh, and finally, uh, so I can stop rambling on and, and take a drink of uh, of water as I just talk to the screen. Uh, I want to talk about researcher well-being. Um, and uh, there's just a couple of points, and uh, these these aren't the end-all, be-all. There's some really great resources out there that that we uh, here at Voxpol uh, are, are offering, and, and we have a great guide uh, on it as well. Um, first and foremost, it's really important to talk about 
uh, your experiences, whether that's with colleagues that, that better understand what you're going through, but with friends, um, with family, you do not have to suffer alone. And when we're talking about immersive, we're talking about uh, ethnography and spending a lot of time into these extremist communities. It can be tough. It can be mentally draining. It can be mentally uh, difficult. So it's very important not to bottle um, all of your experiences up and 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 really talk and just talk about it, whatever it may be, whether you want to make fun of it, make a joke out of it, uh, uh, or if you want to get more serious and, and, and not kind of dehumanize or desensitize yourself to this content, uh, whatever uh, helps you, whatever is therapeutic to you is, is, is super important. Uh, and, and building off of that to limit your collection times or, or limit your immersion times, as, as I would put it. Please do not spend uh, 10 hours a day looking at these uh, communities. Please try and constrict your, 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 your uh, collection, constrict how much data you need to collect on a daily basis to uh, a couple of hours. I would say at max three hours, four hours. Uh, and this would help provide this kind of space, this, this disconnect, uh, because you can, you can drive yourself uh, a bit mad uh, staring at, at, some of this, uh, at some of this content. Uh, another important thing I want to mention is that it's okay to stop. If the netnography isn't working for you, if you feel like it's not being successful, you don't feel like you're getting uh, any results, don't don't feel the need to drag on and on and on and, and put yourself in this miserable situation. Uh, it's okay to stop the, the, the research process. If it's, if it's mentally draining, if it's mentally taxing, uh, if, if the, um, the detriments are not worth the reward as according to you, um, please don't, don't, don't do any, any more of the research. Uh, that, that is completely okay. Uh, again, uh, also, please also try and conduct the fly on the wall approach. I understand that that people want to get this social interview side of things as well. But when you're starting off uh, looking into these communities, I would hold back on, on the social interaction side. Re remember, there's a whole uh, bunch of different layers of engagement um, and that participation doesn't mean you have to interact, right? Uh, participation can come in many different forms and your immersion into these communities can come into many different forms. Uh, I am not the, the end-all be-all expert when it comes to netnography. Uh, I am a PhD student who has really enjoyed uh, not the content itself, but conducting netnographies and getting this immersive experience. Uh, if you want to talk about it, if you can't find anyone else who really has this kind of subject matter or methodological um, expertise, please feel free to uh, email me uh, at jonathan.cons at fsv.cuni.cz. I would be more than happy to talk to you, to talk you through it, to uh, maybe not be your therapist, but if you uh, want to uh, go over how you're conducting the study and you're a bit worried about how you're conducting the study, I would be more than happy to be your guide. Uh, we also have a next gen network uh, that, that we're building towards. Uh, that, that will offer young early career researchers who need these resources, who need a space to talk, to talk about their experiences in, in, in researching these communities, their, their awful experiences, and, and you're looking for this kind of community that has gone through very similar um, very similar uh, experiences, then uh, look no further than, than the Next Gen Network, which we're uh, in development. Uh, you'll hear about it uh, quite, quite soon. Uh, and, and so you can join this community of, of other scholars that are experiencing the same things that know the, 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 the trials and tribulations that, that come with looking at uh, online extremism. So that, that's it for me. I hope you uh, gain quite quite a lot and, and you can listen through my, my rambles. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited uh, about this method and, and hope that uh, the field will start to pick it up more and more and we'll see lots of netnographies from uh, uh, in the years to come. Mm. Uh, thank you very much, John. Uh, I that was really fascinating and a couple of things popped to mind but first I think you're you're completely correct to kind of promote the next gen network and also the resources that Foxball already has on kind of research welfare and the like which we will put in the description below and I'll obviously link to my students and um, I think a couple of questions that popped to mind while we still have time because uh, I don't want to keep you all day um, is 
can you talk about so let's let's stick on research or welfare for a bit because that's the hot button issue and obviously this sure. is a big thing in our field right but just in your personal experience what kind of uh techniques have you employed to kind of keep yourself for lack of a better word sane or just in a good spot with this kind of work right that's 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 a great question um so when, when I one of the big things that I like to uh, do is is to limit the the data collection or the immersion time. So I try and stick to two hours uh, a day. And and how I limit myself or or this kind of mindset that I have uh, is I put on a certain item of clothing. Sometimes it's a hat. Sometimes it's a jacket. And that is my kind of immersion outfit. Um, and then when I take it off, and, and this is very symbolic, uh, but but it, it really helps me when I take it off, then I, I no longer think about it. Um, and this is this problem that I think happens with researchers, especially when dealing with the online world and ethnography. Um, sometimes it's hard to stop. Sometimes it's hard to stop being reflexive and, and immersive, uh, especially when you have all these really cool ideas. But it's great to have these kind of uh, limiters or the, these kind of blockers that 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 indicate, OK, that's enough. We, we you need to kind of move on. Um, I think the the talking with colleagues and friends, uh, even if it's in a joking manner, is, is super important. Uh, going for walks. Uh, doing exercise, just just things that that will completely take your mind uh, off off these off these experiences are are super important. Uh, you you need a way to kind of stop uh, the immersion process, uh, if you will. Yeah, I completely agree with you. That that idea of having like a physical uh, kind of delineator between the two worlds is a very good idea with the article of clothing. I really wish. I kind of known about that back when I started in the terrorism field <laughs> a few years ago. That's brilliant. I might use that in the future. Um, yeah, I think that ethnography is going to, I think it's going to explode I think, in, in terrorism <laughs> studies. I think it bridges this gap, like you've talked about really well there, is that there are a lot of studies that are uh, kind of quantitative, large data uh, scraping involved, and we get all this data and they can kind of make links and you can use kind of machine learning to kind of associate images with each other and the like. But the cultural knowledge is not there or is it needs to be filled in by the researcher. Yeah, and I think that this is a brilliant way of doing it. I think my my question on this was, how do you deal with, uh, you know, with, with ethnography, we often have this idea of like, uh, there's this problem with kind of a language barrier for lack of a better word. And often that is a different language that people go and go to Indonesia and do an ethnography. They might not be perfectly fluent in the language they like. But I think we also have this issue even within the same technical language, like English, how do we bridge the gap with understanding what they mean when they say certain words or how it's used and how do we avoid misinterpreting these things that they're saying, you know? Right. I, 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 I mean, that that is really intrinsically linked with kind of the nuances that that ethnography bring uh, when we talk about it. I, I, I don't want to poo poo uh, quantitative studies. I think it's really important. And I've seen uh, I've seen a lot of studies that are now linking quantitative data with qualitative and more immersive. Uh, so they do like a big data collection and then they they go back in and, and do this kind of more immersive uh, understanding, which I think is which I think is fantastic and a great bridge. Um, and, and I think. The, the best answer that I can give you is to look at the interaction that is revolved around how they formulate uh, the concept, right? If you want to understand the community, if you want to understand their concepts, uh, you, you need to look at how the community um, actually poses it, not not only in the content itself, because as we know, there, there can be a lot of dog whistling, there can be a lot of hidden messages. But uh, what I find is that in the replies, in the reactions, is where you get the real nitty gritty, where you get uh, the actual understanding of what people are talking about. Because people can be much more blatant, and I'm talking about my own experience on Gab Social, they can be much more bla blatant in the replies. Uh, they are very specific about what this, what the actual wording means, what the content means, what the what the memes mean in 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 their kind of context. Uh, so. Really, it's it's through this ethnography or ethnography again, whatever you want to call it. Although I prefer ethnography, uh, it, it's in this immersive or nuanced nuanced understanding of the community and digging deeper into these layers that that you will get the the, the true understandings. I might be a bit biased, but but that's my personal uh, opinion. 
I mean, yeah, I think there's probably something there, right? Even just from my knowledge of reading the comments on things is that people have no sense of subtlety. Uh, the content creator can put in a lot of work into dog whistling based on explicitly said that, but someone will swan into the comments and just like lay it out, right? Um, exactly, exactly. Um, and my last question to you, I think I think you hit on something that I'd love for my students to learn as well, and especially people who are working on larger projects or dissertations and the like, is um, can you talk a bit about this and I think this is the key to being a good researcher. You're right. I don't think it's I don't think it's radical. This idea of m moving or readdressing your research question to fit what you actually find, not just kind of walking into a brick wall of I want to find this. I haven't found it, so I failed. It's I want to find this, but I actually found this, and it's actually much more interesting. Can you talk about your experiences doing that at all? Sure, sure. I mean, like. When, when you are spending, uh, I'll, I'll talk about, it. I've spent probably a total of two years on, on, on Gab Social, uh, looking at their different dynamics and interactions. Uh, the, the problem uh, that I find is I find something really cool and then I, I want to do another study. Uh, and I have like 10 articles lined up in, in the back of my mind. Um, but but this is this is kind of part and parcel of the research process of the immersion process. That yes, we can start off with some broad uh, idea or broad question. I was specifically looking at identity, collective identity, and how insecurity links with identity. Uh, but that can transform and 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 change as you study into these communities. Uh, I think about. It was about a week in uh, to my first uh, study that I was doing, my first kind of case study with netnography that I found that my research question uh, wasn't enough to talk about the cultural elements and the community dynamics. Um, so instead of scrapping it and, and changing my whole research design and whatever else, I just went with my intuition. What, what, what was the most interesting thing to me? Uh, and as I went through this intuition, as I went through this iterative process, uh, I decided that the research question could wait uh, and, and it could wait until I was actually in the writing process. Uh, and, and, and I would be able to much better uh, produce an analysis and produce a discussion um, once I had all of these interesting elements, all of these interesting themes, and then the research, re research question that came out of these interesting elements and themes. Uh, so that, that was my own experience. Uh, and and I've, I've kind of uh, forgone the, the use of research questions, at least uh, at, at uh, the, the most uh, Define level that I have a, a more so broad uh, kind of way to to that I wanted to look at the community and then let the research question kind of come uh, through through this immersion immersive process. Yeah, I, that that's I, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, I think you're right. I think iteration is the way to think about it. It's that you're iterating on, on a on a theme, if anything, by the end of the day. Right. Um, and I think that's the way to go, especially with because you honestly, when you start out on a research project like this with so much content left there. I think it's, unless you've done prior work, I think it's hard to know what you're going to find, right? So I think sticking to yourself, and I think you're right to kind of move away from this idea of, I have a research question that I need to answer and moving towards, I have ideas or I have themes I'm going to look at is, is the better way of doing this kind of work. Right. Um, I mean, you're you're looking at thousands and thousands of posts and whatever else. So it's it's really impossible to kind of get something so defined. And like I said, no netnography is the same. It's okay to be adaptive and changing as, as the process goes on. Right, well, unless you have anything to add, I think that was a really good discussion. So I'll, uh, I'll sign off on this, on this video, on this guest lecture and say, yeah, thank, thank you again, John. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and I know, I think you might have signed yourself up for something here where I know I'm gonna, you're gonna get emails from the students look at this and say this guy seems to know what he's talking about and i've hit a wall so i'm going to email him as a last ditch effort right but, right right yeah no the the more emails the the better i know i signed myself up for something here <laughs> but but I'm, I'm super excited about the method I, i'm sure you could tell uh and i, I really want to see it used more in in our field i think it's brilliant oh you've convinced me i want to try one out now so <laughs> great uh, i might email you it's all working right. <laughs> all right well i'll end it here thanks again john no thank you